It has come to my attention that I've been unemployed now for six months after my layoff in the tech industry. And in that journey, I have experienced very high highs and very low lows. But before I get into it, please like and subscribe to this channel. It'll help me out so much and it is free. I have already made a video about my tech layoff. So go ahead and check it out now or after this video. I'm gonna just share some backstory that I didn't get to share in my previous video. My last day of working at that startup was on June 28th, the last Wednesday of June. And it's such a random date. Like who gets laid off on a Wednesday? It's, there's just a lot to break down. I knew about my layoff weeks ahead of time before my last day. And they just straight up told me, they're like, hey, we're gonna start looking for someone new. We just want someone who's a better fit for the role. Okay, fine. Like I didn't like working there to begin with because it's a startup. Like a lot of startups aren't that great to work with. A lot of the people there are very inexperienced. There's a lot of politics they hire a lot of their friends the founders that managed me they never had a full-time job outside of working at this startup so they graduated university college they just started running this startup they have no experience managing people let alone running a company and they were like do you want to stay on until we find someone new until we can hire them train them and it would just take a lot of stress off of our plate and i'm like okay sure like i don't want to end on a bad note and in those weeks leading up to my last day of working at that startup it was just so chaotic because they let go of two people and one person left so in a span of one month so many people left they were taking their stress out on me on other co-workers and I just didn't like what I saw. On June 26th, the Monday before I left the company, they're like, hey, do you wanna stay part-time? We can only afford to pay you, you know, minimum wage. I realized that this story is kind of confusing. So my intended last day was June 30th. And on that Monday of that week, they asked me to stay longer after that, but they wanted to just cut down my pay and cut down my hours. I think they quickly realized that they weren't equipped to have me leave so abruptly that just shows how unorganized that company was they had four weeks notice and they let me go i'm like let me think about this let me really think about this okay you know what like i don't want to leave on bad terms and it's honestly not a good deal i get more with employment insurance if I were to do this, I would be doing it out of the kindness of my heart. In the next 48 hours, I just didn't like what I saw. Someone left the company on very bad terms and my coworker was just like, if you don't need this money, you need to leave, get out because it's not getting any better. That's what my coworker said. And then Wednesday comes around and I'm like, hey, I just don't think that it will work for me to continue on part-time. And the founder was just like, okay, leave right away. Like, so petty, get out, we don't need you anymore. And immediately I was gone. And it just shows and confirmed how unprofessional they were. So I don't regret that decision at all. I am so sick right now. Um, I have a sore throat and I've just been coughing, feverish, whatever, but I'm pushing through. If my voice sounds weird, I am so sorry. But let's get into my unemployment journey. I'm just gonna be breaking it down month by month. I'm gonna just start with July. Once again, it was the last week of June that I got laid off, the last Wednesday of June that I got laid off. And I remember the first few days I was sleeping so well because I knew that I didn't have to wake up to a toxic work environment and I remember um, I was in touch with a lot of the employees who were laid off at that company as well because they have a very high turnover rate. I think my coworker who was laid off the same day as me, she was trying to sue or is trying to sue them. And she was just trying to collect as much data information from me as possible and reaching out and everything like that. But I was just like, hey, if you need someone to help you in your case, let me know. I am 100% all for this. And I know that everyone who was a part of that company, they can can justify your claim. Oh my God, I sound like a lawyer. I actually did have a lot of interviews because I was applying to everything and anything at the time. I'm like, I just wanna get the fuck out of this startup. I wanna get the fuck out of this job. I was applying to everything, was getting a lot of interviews. It's, you know, obviously got rejected from all of them, <laughs> but it's okay, it's okay because I remember at the very end of the month, 
I had an interview with Microsoft and this interview changed everything for me, okay? So obviously, I didn't get the job at Microsoft, but this lady who interviewed me was a career coach. And she was just like, you can't just be applying to any job you see. You got to find a job that you really like. You got to really hone in on what you want. What do you want? And I'm like, oh man, she is right. She is 100% correct. It was a very harsh interview because I'm like, wait, aren't we supposed to do, be doing a job interview right now? But anyways, I was very grateful for her services because it was free. And she even apologized too. She was just like, I'm so sorry if my career coach side is coming out. This is just something that's very instinctual for me. And I'm like, okay, that's fine. And she even said that my resume looks like a job hopper because I've been staying at a company for just under two years or just over a year or something like that mind you this lady was probably a gen xer so take what she says and take her perspective with a grain of salt she said that the next job i need to stick with it for five years or else i will look like a job hopper and i'm the issue it really stressed me out and i know she was 100 percent correct. I've been very picky. I know that I don't want to work at a startup, but overall July was a good month for me because it just felt like, oh my God, I am off for the summer. School's out. That's, that's really truly the vibe of July for me. I was so happy that I wasn't in a stressful environment anymore. You know what's crazy about leaving a job like that was that I felt lighter and everyone felt it as well around me. They're like, oh my god, Savannah, you're not that snappy anymore. I was snappy. I am so sorry. I didn't mean to be like that. It's just crazy how a horrible job can manifest into other areas of your life. It, it's really not worth it because I feel like in the process I hurt people that I love and I am so sorry to everyone in my life who I have hurt while I was working that terrible job. This leads me into August. And by August, I still didn't feel like I was pressured or rushed to be employed. I wasn't applying to many jobs, to be honest, because I plan on going to Italy very last minute. And by last minute, I mean like I booked the trip three weeks before I left. I wasn't supposed to go because when the idea popped up of going to Italy with Andy, my boyfriend, I was still employed and it was so hard to take time off with that company, even though they promised unlimited PTO. I couldn't even get sick days. Like I was feeling so sick one day, like coughing on calls, boogers running down and they're just like, no, like you can't take time off. We need you. I was like, okay, like, I'm unemployed right now. Life is short. I'm just gonna go. I switched locations because I turned on the dishwasher and it picked up a lot of noise. We stopped off in September. September, I went to Italy for a week and a half. Had one really good lead, or so I thought, for a job. I actually did an interview in Italy and it went so well. Um, it was with my potential manager who was so excited that I was in Italy because she did a term abroad in Italy. She was like, I will send you all of my recommendations all the great foods great spots bars everything you should definitely check it out the success of that interview allowed me to move on to the next step which was doing an assignment for them it was a very long assignment it was quite hard but i did it all in one afternoon they were so impressed by it they're like okay come into office mind you their office is in new york i don't live in new york i lied that i lived in new york and it was my fault which was fine like i don't mind going my friend has a great place in the east village and i stayed with him i even went to a rave the brooklyn <laughs> mirage it was it was a great experience even though i didn't get the job you know it, it happens it just sucks that the reason why i didn't get the job was because i didn't have enough experience i had four years of experience and they wanted five understandable but that is something that could have been an email than a meeting like they could have known that from just looking at my resume, looking at my LinkedIn. I didn't have to go all that way. They didn't have to waste all of my time and their time as well. The HR lady was so nice. She was just like, do you want like a more junior role? We have something for you. I said it was okay. I don't want to take a junior role. The pay wasn't that great to begin with and I couldn't imagine how much the pay would have been for this junior role that they were offering me. So after that, I was so burnt out from the job search. I was so burnt out from doing assignments and then getting rejected, doing interviews, and then not hearing from them. This leads me into October. And by October, I was so burnt out from the job search. 
I took a break from it all and just focused in on YouTube. And I bet you can actually see how consistently I was posting because I was so in it. And my goal for YouTube is that I want to get monetized. And when I get monetized, that just means that I have another stream of income where I don't have to bank on one stream of income, my salary from my full-time job. I can work a job that I actually love to do and not have to worry about the pay. And on top of that, I get to do what I love which is YouTube as well. That was the month where I grew the most from YouTube. And that was really it for October. I didn't apply to much jobs. Once again, so burnt out. This leads me into November where I start freaking out because 2023 is about to end. And once American Thanksgiving hits, a lot of these HRs, a lot of these companies are going to be basically tuned out until the next year. They're not going to really be hiring. They're not going to be really working. I kind of honed in on finding a job. You can even tell that I was posting less in November. I was just having a panic attack, feeling depressed. I'm like, what has my life come to? I shouldn't have quit or I shouldn't have done X, Y, Z at my previous company. But I can't think like that. I feel like what's meant to be was meant to be. At the end of the day, I am not in a toxic work environment anymore. And I gotta remind myself about that. I know that my coworker who still works there is struggling. And a lot of the coworkers who were still there when I left have already left afterwards. And then December hits, still depressed still unemployed, not getting many interviews. My parents were going to Australia where my brother lives for a month and a half. They're just like, do you want to come? Do you want to come? And at first I was like, I'm not going to come. I'm not going to go. I'm going to be unemployed soon. And then I was thinking, I'm like, am I really going to be unemployed? Like there's only so much time on earth that we have with our family. Once I get a job, I won't have the opportunity to be doing stuff like this. So I booked my plane ticket which was so expensive but i'm like okay family is very important i need to go i need to go i don't think i will regret it later on in life because family is everything so here we are it's december 9th i am catching a flight in a few hours my stuff is on the floor it's a mess right now I am very excited, I am very nervous, and who knows, maybe I'll get a job in Australia. But I will still be posting, I will be posting a lot of travel content, and just more videos like this. My brother recently got, uh, not laid off, but his contract didn't renew at TikTok Australia, which is really cool. He's a little depressed, so maybe I can get him to talk about his experience working there. So hopefully I can get him on the videos. All right, that is it for this video today. I hope you enjoyed it. So hit that like button, smash that subscribe button, and let me know your thoughts down below in the comment section. All right, I will see you in my next video. Bye, love ya.